All right. Here we go. We got the uh, Netgear 8 port uh, switch. If you've seen me unbox the uh, the Cisco switch, I mentioned I don't like Netgear or D-Link switches, but uh, sometimes they, you need a switch and that's all a computer store has. Now this was intended to be for a client, but um, I didn't even install it. I just felt uh, it, it wasn't the proper thing to put in a, a small business, no, no matter how small. Even though this switch says it's, uh, it's, for, it's, it's made for business, these little switches end up being put uh, in a corner somewhere or, you know, somewhere where dust gathers up or gets kicked a lot or gets unplugged a lot. So they're not always uh, put in the solution they're intended for. It's, it's usually for a quick fix. So if you mount this thing right and you put it uh, up against the wall or any kind of uh, secure mount, it, it, it will probably... Uh, work just fine for a small business but again uh, the reliability uh, I don't know even though it has a lifetime warranty uh, what do you do when the uh, the thing breaks you, you, you're still gonna be out of a switch you're gonna need to put something else while you get your uh, item are made uh, deal with warranty and get it back so it requires a second visit to the client if you're installing a client site so you're trying to avoid all that uh, and uh, even though something might have a lifetime warranty, it's the hassles that it creates that you, you want to avoid. So, and sometimes the client doesn't feel happy that you have to charge them twice, you know, for putting something in that, you know, has failed so quickly. So sometimes you get burnt by, uh, you know, yeah, it's cheap, yeah, it's fast, but, uh, you know, client says, well, why did you put it in if it, if it failed so quickly? So it's, it's kind of hard to argue with the, you know, that kind of logic sometimes, even though it, it doesn't really make any sense, you don't have control over the quality of a manufacturer's products, but you know, if you're going to go with averages, I'd, I'd go with the uh, Cisco small business uh, switches. If you plug them to a UPS, uh, they work just fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a little fake unboxing of this and just go over some of the features. I have tested this, you know, in my home environment. I, I put about uh, 500 gigs of data through this and if you want to compare um, data sizes uh, normally a, a company with five to ten employees they, they don't really use a lot of data the even with the hosted exchange setups and you know uh, website access unless they're using any kind of video editing where they're uploading huge files or doing anything uh, out of the ordinary then you know they don't use a lot of data they think they use a lot of data but they don't um, so on average five to ten uh, user office you, you're looking at anywhere between 20 gigs to you know 80 gigs of data usage per month and that that's you know the average you know for things like law firms like accounting firms clinics uh, even uh, even photo studios maybe just a, a bit more there but uh, there's not really all that much uh, happening um, and so putting 500 gigs of data through this uh, this will give you an idea that this will probably go for maybe easy six months with any kinds of freezing or reboots or so it, it seems fairly reliable in terms of how much data you can pass through um, so let's just do a little fake unboxing because I have opened this before and uh, I have tested it so that's not going to be a surprise to what we see here so let's just take it out of the box all right so you get uh, your standard little neck your uh, listing of all their better switches uh, that you can buy uh, so so if you want to move up, they have a nice glossary of all the features the other switches have that yours doesn't, except maybe for the five port uh, switch there. But everything else on this is, is better than this model. So if you're looking at uh, feature wise, uh, this is probably the lowest end smart switch to, um, with a user interface. Uh, 
from next year's very best. Uh, some other what's in the package. CD documentation and uh, let's see, smart switch software. So I've, I've never used the smart switch software. Anything that has a web interface, you're better off using that. Installing this on a computer, you're probably going to end up losing the CD. You're, you're probably going to end up uh, changing notebooks or whatever through time, and you're not going to have this software. So don't depend on this software. Don't rely for any in, any reason for for this. Just don't even bother using it. So it feels heavy. So that you know that's. A good, a good indication of the uh, materials uh, they use to make this, so it does have some pretty good weight to it. Um, AC adapters. The one thing I'll say about Netgear AC adapters is that they actually put their name on the AC adapter. So a, a lot of the other other uh, manufacturers, uh, they'll, they'll get uh, third party uh, AC adapters and include it with the package, but it doesn't usually say their name. Now the, this is good because uh, it's easier matching, you know, device AC adapters up. So I, when I see this and it says Netgear, I know it's for a Netgear device. You know, the, the voltage and amps is a, it's a little hard to read. They all have this problem for some reason. They don't want you to know how much power something consumes and they try to write in the smallest possible font. And if you're getting old like me, it's almost impossible to read. So it's, uh, let's see. Nope, can't read it. It's too small. Oh wait, let's see. Uh, 12 volts, one amp. So that's that's a fairly standard uh, power requirement uh, these little switches have. Uh, note it's not PoE. Uh, there's eight ports, and this one can be the switch can be powered by another PoE switch, but it does not provide power to any of these ports. So instead of using an AC adapter instead of using this, you can hook this up to a PoE switch and link them up that way. The, the other switch will have to be a PoE switch and you plug it into this port only and it'll provide power as well as data. Uh, so you can link up the two switches by using a simple uh, patch cable. Now this is good if you, if you want to put this in some kind of uh, closet space and uh, you know wire out uh, a different area with a few connections so this can be hidden in a closet space it, power can be provided by the main switch so it can solve some solutions that other switches that don't come with this can solve but again you know it's always better to do the right thing and in, in a case like that the right thing to do is get proper cabling uh, the uh, the number one problem I see with uh, small businesses it's always avoiding the the proper cabling. You know they'll they'll do anything to avoid getting the cabling guy in because they say it say just costs too much. So if you do proper cabling from the beginning and you don't shift your office you know around all that much, then there really is no excuse for not getting proper cabling. Um, when you don't have proper cabling, you end up with little switches in little corners under desks, um, and it's not a good solution. You, you, most of the time, these things will get banged around, and eventually they will die. They will become unresponsive, and it's just there's no fan inside here. It's all passive uh, cooling, so it, these vents are kind of small. So if you put it in an area where it, it's gonna be covered up or not much air going in or out it's gonna fail at some point so good thing is lifetime warranty and the uh, neck gear doesn't know how you made it fail you know if you, if you put it in a area where it failed quickly it's uh, still covered under warranty so you're good there but um, always avoid you know small switches so let's let's just go over to the features of this thing so eight ports it does support VLANs, so if you know how to configure VLANs and you have a proper use for them, I, you can use a little switch like this. Also, it supports uh, link aggregation, and it, if you know how to use that feature, uh, it can also work in a scenario where it requires it. Um, let's 
see what else besides those features uh, let's see it it has a, a reboot pinhole so if you have a simple paper clip you can reboot uh, the device without unplugging the power now that's what normally most manufacturers do if if you need a reboot functionality you just unplug the AC adapter but I guess night gear figures you need a, a proper reboot method and you know that's that's where it is now this is good and bad because when when um when I first needed to use this, I always look for the pinhole. I, I don't necessarily read what it says, and I assume it's it's for factory default. And so I needed, I wanted to factory default this. And you know, first place I glanced, I saw the pinhole, and uh, I, I I I put the paper clip there, and you know, it lit up, and you know, it, it rebooted. But uh, I was actually expecting a, a factory default, and I, I didn't see that it said reboot because it's so small. Now, if you look on this side, um, it does say factory defaults. So let's see, what does it say? Yeah, factory defaults. So if you press it there, it, it'll wipe out everything. You lose whatever configuration, and it'll make it seem like it just came out of the box. So I would prefer that it didn't have this uh, reboot uh, pinhole. It's just a little confusing. So. Um, it's it might be a good feature for some but when you could easily just unplug the ac adapter and plug it back in it's it does the same thing so to me it's a it's a kind of a wasteful feature Let's see uh, no it has some has a little security notch there so you can secure it um, i i don't think this is this needs it. Uh, I, who's gonna steal this? Honestly, uh, this is not the kind of thing you steal. Uh, if someone sees a switch, you know, sitting on a desk, uh, there's probably all kinds of other cables plugged into it. So it's it's not worth the hassle. It's it's just just one of those features that's again wasted. You, you really don't need that. Um, let's see. Back to the front, uh, power, LED, and you got your LEDs. So this is a, a gigabit switch, so you got different uh, light indicators for the connection uh, each device has. Okay, so color is a uh, light gray with the dark blue in the uh, front if it doesn't show up very well let's see it does come with the let's get this out of the way it does come with the um, little rubber feet and the mounting screws if you actually want to mount it and it does have the proper holes so you can mount it a, a lot of the uh, you know cheap uh, switches these days they don't even bother with including uh, the mounting screws or the proper holes for mounting these devices like uh, oh, what's that god awful company Tenda Tenda um, their low end devices does not include mounting screws or the holes in the back of the device so you're, if you need to use one of those devices god I hope not uh, just just throw those things away if you if you see one just replace it throw it away it's uh, the garbage I just uh, from experience I know you know I've had somebody who kept providing those for you know his clients and wanted me to install them so I did but they're terrible devices they just they, all kinds of headaches so they're not worth the money okay back to Netgear so lifetime warranty 24 7 support so if you do need to call them they are available so what I'm going to do with this is, is uh, next video I'm going to tear it open so we can see what's inside but for now that's that's the unboxing and uh, how I feel about the, this switch and my opinion on other um, you know switches and what you should do and again for for business I don't recommend you know small switches if you are going to use this, mount it properly, put it in an area where it can't get kicked around, but use proper switches, use proper cabling, that's the best solution always.